AJ Jacobson with Rivals.com. Talking to, to Jacob Capra. I was about to call you Joey Capra. That would, I just talked to your brother. I'm talking to Jacob here. Uh, day three of fall camp, media day 2018. How's the camp been first three days? I mean, so far so good. We've been blessed with some uh, cooler weather. So yeah. that's been nice. But, uh, you know, this is the most stacked line I've been on here. My third, going to my third season. So it's nice to have some depth and, you know, a lot of competition. You know, it's really pushing us to be the best we can be. But so far it's been good. Very impressed with you yesterday. I saw you, you firing out real nicely off the line, but also that you're running with the ones right now. It, that's cool. It is cool. You know, Chris will, you know, emphasizes that it's an organizational chart that could change at any time. So, I mean, I don't want to get like, you know, all hyped up, but it, it is a very special feeling. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, no, I, I, was, I was really impressed to see you up there. There, He's sending you a message. There's a message being sent by that happening. So, it's a good thing. Um, how do you feel you've improved in this last year? You know, on this O-line right now, we have four guys who have started, I don't even know how many games. And so in the off season, it's a long off season. We, uh, it's, I just nitpick little things, see how they're successful and try to learn as much as I can from these guys who have obviously proven themselves already. So when you have that many, that much talent ahead of you and you know, it's kind of hard not to get better in the off season. So, yeah, you know, and you come from, I would call it a football pedigree, and that is because you have a brother who's, you know, playing for Utah. You have another brother who's going to be a duck yeah. next year or in a year. Um, how are all you guys able to get scholarships and play in, and, and save your parents all that money? It, it baffles me. I mean, it's honestly, we grew up not playing sports. We grew up in Truckee, California, close to Tahoe, yeah. um, snowboarding, racing snowboards, racing mountain bikes. My dad moved the family for a job. Um, I think my freshman year of high school, that's when they pushed us into sports against all of our, none of us wanted to play. None of us wanted to play. We all were all against it. And we ended up being, you know, a little good at it. And uh, now we're here and we're all just thankful, thankful. Now we love it. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know what we can get on into exactly on this, so I'll just try to keep it yeah. real generic. But your brother Joey just went through the process. Yeah. Um, t talk about the advice. I asked him the, the reverse, what advice you gave him. Yeah. Tell me what advice you gave him. Yeah. Well, he was committed to ASU, and obviously I was proud of him. Nothing that wrong with ASU. But, you know, I didn't recruit him too hard because my brother recruited me pretty hard. Okay. And, you know, I loved it. You know, he wanted me there. Yeah. And uh, so I recruited him a little softer. I just told him the facts. I told him, like, hey, I really think you are going to get treated the best here. And I think it's the best opportunity and like, but you do you and I'll be proud of you either way. And I think he knew deep down in his heart this is the place he wanted to be. Because he told me after he committed that he always knew Oregon was the one. Yeah. So. Well, and he was saying that the only reason he committed to ASU, great place obviously, and he loved it. But he said if he had an Oregon scholarship offer back then, yeah. it would have been Oregon. So. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's funny how recruiting works. And uh, once you get the offer, all the offer timing goes to the side. And you just, you got to, you know, assess your best options. But I must say, I would be pretty excited if I'm in your shoes and I know my little brother's coming. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I was, because I went home for the week before fall camp and, you know, I was just subtly recruiting him. And, <laughs> you know, it was just a great feeling once he committed. He committed once I came back, so I was kind of hoping he'd do it when I was there. But, I mean, I'm just ecstatic. You know, shifting out to the field a little bit, I, I, when I watch you guys drill, I see Mirabal and Cristobal, and, and uh, you got a GA that's always right there with you, oh, yeah. too. You guys got great attention right now. Um, that's different than in the past. You know, in the past, there might have been one offensive line coach working, maybe a GA. Yeah. So this is kind of unique. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. Tell me about the instruction you guys are getting right now. You know, we really have three O line coaches, yeah. so there are eyes on you all the time. Yeah. And it's just, it's great because, you know, you're always getting help, you know. When you have one or even two, you know, some little mistakes go unseen. But now... There's 16 of you out Yeah, there. you know, so it's kind of hard to have a lot of things unseen when you have three O-line coaches watching you. So it's awesome, you know. Really, really, really pushes your progression. Yeah, and, you know, Cristobal and Mirabal, I've just been listening to them, and they've got these great tech technical insights, you know, really good technique guys. Uh, you must just be soaking that stuff up. Yeah. Well, Cristobal and Mirabal have known, known each other for a while, and uh, so their chemistry is great, the way they coach us together. And Coach Woodle, we don't even see him as a GA. We just see him as a coach, you know. So it's just it's awesome having all three of them. Now, is the fact that the head coach is also the offensive line coach, does that put you guys on a higher status than the rest of the team? I mean, uh, the uh, linemen are already the best-looking guys, but do you think it also because, you know, there's more because of that? I mean, I think it's cool. He's a, my high school head coach was also an all-line coach. That's cool. So it's kind of cool going to that, too. But uh, I could see how some other position groups would think that, but I don't think that he's biased at all. I mean, <laughs> in practices, he makes sure to coach us. Like, I don't think so. Okay. All right. Last question I got for you, Jacob. Uh, tell me one thing about yourself Duck fans don't know. 
Well, like I said, I've asked you this before, but you know, you got to do me a new one. Okay. All right, I'll give you a new one. Yes, that's cool. Um, can I have a second? Yeah. <laughs> um, I have two Newfoundlands. Two Newfoundlands, the big, big uh, water dogs. They uh, originated pulling fishing nets in of old boats, and uh, they're just gigantic. I think uh, Wyatt is the bigger one. He weighs about like 150 right now. Holy mackerel. Yeah, so so I love those guys, two, two big-ass dogs. <laughs> what, what do those guys do during the day when you're off yeah. doing your thing? Oh, wow. Uh, where I'm from, Auburn, California, it gets a little hot, so they just lay in front of the fan and swim. Oh, they're at home. Yeah, they're at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've tried to convince my parents to let me take them out, but they said not until I get a house. So I think that's fair enough. <laughs> still, a, still an apartment yet. I don't think they'll do very well in an apartment. <laughs> All right. Well, here you have it, Duck fans. Jacob Capper, I love him if he's a duck lover, because I'm a dog lover, because I, I love my dog. Yeah. So uh, thank you for taking the time to talk thank to you. rivals. Appreciate thank it. You.